Hey loves, my name is Afani and this is the Afani Be Gentle podcast. Today's episode is a touchy one because everyone has a different viewpoint on this. Some people base how effective it is based on their experiences, while others base how effective it is based on how others feel about it. You're probably confused, right? I'm talking about disciplining your children. I want to start off by saying I am in no way, shape, or form a licensed child psychologist. However, I am actively in school for my degree in psychology, specifically family-related psychology. When I got in trouble growing up, whether that be at school, which didn't happen often, or at home, I didn't get grounded. For those of you who are like, what is grounded? That's when your parents take something you value away from you for a period of time, or ban you from doing something that you really like or really want to do for a designated amount of time. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's two weeks. Hell, it can even be a whole summer. This is supposed to deter you from making that mistake again. Some people were grounded when they got in trouble while others were physically punished. People call it corporal punishment. This can mean whoopings, beatings, pop, spank, slap, etc etc or having to do squats push-ups run you know shit you just don't want to do growing up I got whoopings it didn't take me long to realize that I just was not about that whooping life I wasn't a bad kid by any means but there were just some things my parents did not play about lying stealing and being disrespectful to anyone especially adults were top three I remember saying the word lie was almost like a curse word in my childhood home. I was not allowed to call my parents or grandparents liars, even when I knew they weren't being completely honest. I would always try to find a slick way of saying they were lying without saying they were lying, if you know what I mean, but I never really got away with it. I want to give you a little bit of background history on my family dynamic before we jump into this topic. My parents are from Belize. My father grew up with his mother and father, and my mother grew up with her mother. My paternal grandfather is a pastor. My paternal grandmother is a retired nurse. And my maternal grandmother is literally a jack of all trades. Both of my parents grew up in a household where they were either popped or got whoopings. For those of you who are religious or believe in Christianity, Proverbs 13, 24 says, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but he who loves his children is careful to discipline them. Of course, there's a huge difference between whooping your kids and beating the shit out of them. Every now and then, There are some kids that need a little whooping here or there to help them get their shit together. Of course, there are people who believe that you should never, under any circumstance, have to hit your kid in order to get them to do the right thing. And if we're being honest, guys, to some degree, I kind of agree. I believe whoopings work on certain children and talking works on others. There's no one who believes this more than the sister-sister twins. In one interview, Tia Mari, half of Tia and Tamara Mari, stated that she does not spank her kids. However, her twin sister, Tamara, definitely does. I found it funny because everyone seems to believe that Tia is the quote-unquote black sister and Tamara is the quote-unquote white sister. However, When it comes to discipline based on stereotypes, that's simply not true. The stereotypes being white people punish their kids by taking things away from them and black people punish their kids by whooping or beating them. What's interesting is when I'm watching a show with my family and Sarah starts to curse out her mother and father telling them to go to hell and start saying things like, I wish you would die, Paula and John. And all of my black family members are like, Sarah would have got her ass beat or Sarah would have been picking her teeth up off that floor. And then I have my white friends who watch shows with black people and are thoroughly surprised that their parents punish them. They will say things like, you have rights, Regina. Your mom just can't take your phone away from you. It's yours. And Regina is looking at Sarah like, girl, shut your ass up before my mama come in here and beat both of our asses. 
if you're not aware who Tia and Tamara are, first of all, where the hell have you been? They are identical twin sisters who are also actresses. They've played twins on shows such as Sister Sister and Twitches. Their mom is black and their father is white and both of their parents were in the military. Tia is now married to a black man while Tamara is married to a white man. They both have a son and a daughter. Based on their representation on social media, people have deemed Tia the black twin and Tamara the white twin. I found it really interesting when Tia did that interview because she spoke about her upbringing and stated that when she was being raised, they were spanked, so she found other ways to discipline her children. She said that she was more of a non-traditional parent, whereas Tamara was a traditional parent. Tia goes on to say a non-traditional parent goes with the flow. They don't put too many rules and regulations on their children and they allow their children to be and grow into who they are instead of dictating their life. She also stated that if you're spanking your children, it's because of you and where you are in your headspace. It shows your lack of patience and it says that you just want to get it over with and get it done with. Whereas if you don't spank your children, then it takes more time and you have to talk to them and explain to them so that they can understand what's going on, which will cause a better outcome. She concluded by saying no one is allowed to spank her children, not even her twin sister. And she believes that spankings will cause fear. So I grew up getting whoopings. I believe it taught me a few lessons. One was to fear my parents, but not fear them in the way you may think. I wasn't afraid of my parents per se. I was more afraid of disappointing them. I was afraid of being a failure or making silly mistakes that could ultimately cost me my future, like stealing, lying, and being disrespectful. Stealing has cost so many people their future. Sure, I won't get life in prison for stealing a pack of gum, but it starts somewhere. That goes for lying too. Once you start lying, people lose all respect for you and they can't trust anything you say anymore. I can't stand a liar. If there's one thing that I teach my children is to never lie. The truth is more important than sparing people's feelings. And of course, who wants to be around someone who's constantly being disrespectful? And disrespect is not only talking back, it can be yelling, screaming, cursing, you know, all the extras. So when I got older and I decided to have children, I knew that I would look at an array of ways to discipline my children if need be. I wouldn't just beat their ass and call it a day because I also learned that whoopings aren't the only way to teach your children right from wrong. According to procom.org, Corporal punishment sets clear boundaries and motivates children to behave in school. Children are better able to make decisions about their behavior, exercise self-control, and be accountable for their actions. This applies not only to school, but to the household as well. Another thing that punishment has taught me was for every action, there's a reaction. Some people go out of their way to get a certain reaction out of you. Your kids can do the same thing. They will push you beyond your limit. You ever get mad when you have a younger sibling who is constantly fucking up and you're like, damn, I would have got my ass beat for that when I was growing up. I mean, it seems like your siblings are getting away with murder compared to the shit you used to get in trouble for. I say this all the time to my sweetheart. Like, damn, my little brother is so spoiled. He gets whatever the hell he wants and he does whatever the hell he wants. Then I start to sound like those old ass people saying shit like, back in my day, I would have got my ass beat if I left dishes in the sink. But then my sweetheart will remind me that times have changed. Our parents aren't young bucks anymore. They're too tired to inflict corporal punishment on our siblings. So they just get away with a whole bunch of stuff. The key is balance because if you raise the oldest ones right, they tend to help you out when the younger ones are coming up or so I've heard. You already know what time it is. I have a few do's and don'ts that I've learned since having my own child and raising him to be the most brilliant, kind, sensitive, and loving boy he is. I have learned when raising a child, do be patient. Sometimes kids just need a little bit of time and understanding. However, don't allow them to walk all over you. 
There's a fine line between allowing your children to be children and allowing them to run amok. Do set clear expectations. I learned that my child thrives when a schedule is put in place. They have a set bedtime, a set bath time, and during the week, a designated homework time. I noticed I would get less pushback from Chandler when he became more comfortable with his schedule. It even got to a point where he would tell me, Mom, it's time for you to run my bath or it's time for you to read me a book. A schedule benefits everyone. Don't be overdramatic. Sometimes you have to be flexible with your schedule when it comes to children. Sometimes you may start dinner a little later than normal, so it pushes their bedtime back. If they get cranky, be patient and don't be so overdramatic. Things happen. Do set clear boundaries. This may sound like, hey baby, mommy doesn't like when you do this or daddy doesn't appreciate when you say that. Explain to your children why it's not okay to do and say certain things in a way that they understand. Just saying because I said so doesn't give a kid a clear understanding why it's wrong. This is something that I'm still learning to do. Now that Chandler is six, he understands so much more. Sure, he pushes my buttons every now and then, but I quickly remind him why I dislike something, which makes it easier for him to understand where I'm coming from. Kids learn from a very young age how far they can push their parents before they snap. If your kid doesn't respect you or they know that your reaction isn't something that they'll fear, because believe it or not, there's a thin line between respect and fear, they will tap dance all over your boundaries and won't think twice about it. Don't be hard on yourself. Sometimes kids wild out. As long as you know how to get your kids back on the right path, don't punish yourself for your kids' wrongdoings. Do understand that what you don't teach or punish your kid for, someone else will. Nobody wants to be around kids that are rowdy all the time. Nobody wants to deal with kids that are hard-headed. I can't stand when I have to continuously talk to someone's kid because they don't have any home training. It's one of my biggest pet peeves because I don't like to repeat myself. Don't forget, your kids are a reflection of you. Regardless of how old they get, you're always going to be the one to blame for your kids' wrongdoings, just like you're always going to be the one to be praised for your kids' accomplishments and achievements. Do seek therapy. Yes, you. You need to seek therapy. A lot of people try to live out their dreams through their children and end up pushing their children down the wrong path. Heal what you went through as a child so you can learn how to give your child the best chance at thriving in this world as possible. Don't blame your child for your misfortunes. All that will do is push your child to do the unthinkable things. For example, I hear a lot of quote unquote moms saying, I got pregnant with you and I had to drop out of school or quit my dream job where my body hasn't been the same since. How the hell is that your child's fault? Because you wanted to do the nasty unprotected. Then they go on and take their frustrations out on their kids, whether that be through physical, mental, or emotional abuse. Those kids may end up feeling unwanted and can go down a slippery slope if not loved properly. Well, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed my insight on disciplining children. Remember to take everything I say with a grain of salt. What works for one child may not work for the other. If you like this episode and want a part two, please feel free to hit me up at the Ifani Be Gentle podcast at gmail.com or head over to our brand new website at www.ifanibegentlepodcast.com. Thank you so much for listening and spreading the word. I can't wait for you to hear next week's episode. But until then, my name is Ifani and this is the Ifani Be Gentle podcast.